Welcome to the online Bible study of the Rose of Sharon Ministries. Hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Billy Washington and Lady Joanne Washington. You're in for a treat today because we're studying the Word of God with three other churches because we are three churches in one location. The first church is Repair of the Breach Worldwide Ministry with Pastor Ron Odell and Lady Sanithia Walker. And also we have Praise Center Community Church and our Bishop, Bishop Donald H. and Dr. Yolanda Butler. And you have the Rose of Sharon Ministries, Pastor by Billy Ray Washington and Lady Joanne Washington. You in for a treat because we're talking about Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Talking about Paul. He's still in prison, but he is writing to encourage the people of God. So get your Bibles. But before we get started, let's first have a prayer by Pastor Billy Ray Washington. All right, Pastor. Prayers in the kingdom. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the privilege once again to gather around the Word of God. Now, Lord, our goal is to hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you, number one. And then we want to be all that you would have us to be. You said you came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. You said get wisdom and get knowledge, but out of all of our getting, get an understanding. Lord, we need you to teach us how to live holy. Yes, Jesus. Because we have a will within us. But every time we would do good, oh, yes. evil is present yes, with us. But God, if you breathe on us, breathe on us and Father. teach us how to surrender to yes. the leading yes. of the Spirit of God and the Word of God, yes, we'll demonstrate the fact that we are more than conquerors. Oh, yes, so we thank you, Lord, that you've called us out of darkness into this marvelous, marvelous light. light. Yes. And we thank you for this privilege once again to eat at the table of the Lord. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Washington, for that wonderful, wonderful prayer. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, is talking about Paul. He's in prison, but he's writing an epistle to the church. He continues to stress three points. All right. Walk in the light as we are no more to walk in darkness like the old man. Okay. But walk according to Christ, who set us free from the bondage of sin. Yes, yes. Christ has given us freedom. We are his children and have been adopted into the royal family. So let us walk as children of God. Mm-hmm. We are to walk also in wisdom, Paul said. Paul told the Ephesian church, that we should have the characteristics of Christ as adopted children. And lastly, Paul points out how the relationship between husband and wife is a reflection yes, is. of Christ and the church. That's why Paul let us know that Christ and the church was a mystery. Now let's start our Bible study. Pastor Washington, what is our topic on today for our Bible study. Okay, well, the topic of our Bible study today is Be Imitators. imitators. Subtopic, Christ Christ and and the the church. Church. Oh, yes. Be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Now, what does the word imitator mean? A person who copies the behavior of are actions of another. What if your children copied your behavior? Or would, mimic your behavior. Yes, would they be mimicking the behavior of Christ? All right. Or the Antichrist? <laughs> <laughs> I have topics on each of our verses here. And verses 1 through 7 topic is walk in love. This is what the verses are talking about. And I have two different versions the first version is the King James Version on the left-hand side. Okay. On the right-hand side. Good to me. Amplified Version. And so what we're going to do, 
Pastor Washington is going to read the Amplified Version. I am? Yes, I read the King James Version. Okay. In order to open up the understanding a little bit more. Okay. And also, good. we're going to be talking, okay? Because this is a Bible study, and we're going to do all the verses. Now, remember I said the first seven verses is talking about walk in love. And right. it starts off with King James Version. I'm going to read it. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering, a sacrifice to God, for a sweet-smelling savor. Okay, Amplified Version says, Therefore become potatoes of God. Copy him, in other words, copy God. Okay, uh -huh. copy him and follow his examples. As well beloved children, imitate their father. And that's the last uh, Bible that I was saying that a lot of time when we're in a family, a lot of times children they do they imitate what their fathers do. Yes, yes. My father used to smoke pipes, so my <laughs> goal in life was when I got big enough, I was gonna get me a pipe. <laughs> So whatever he did is what yes. I wanted to do. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, verse 2 says in the Amplified Version, and walk continually in love. That is, value one another. Amen, Practice amen. Practice empathy and compassion. Treat one another right. Unselfishly seeking the best for others. Yes. Just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for you as an offering and a sacrifice to God, slain for you so that it became a sweet In other words, fragrance. Jesus loved us so much. This time about love, Miss Saints. Mm -hmm. That he loved us so much that he gave himself as an offering mm -hmm. and a sacrifice yes. for us. So God is saying, let's imitate him as dear children. See, a lot of yes. times we want to imitate him in his power. Yes. We want to do uh, dynamic things. But he wants us to start with love. Yeah, the basics. And if we start with love. I, I call it the basics. We do call it the basics. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. the foundation. Yeah, we want to do all these miracles and the action stuff, but just do the simple thing. Treat one another right. That's Speak where to it one starts. another in, yes. in a nice tone. Yes, yes. And if we do that, then we can grow into the other miraculous Amen. things. Amen. But if we killing each other, we never will get to the miraculous. So let's love one another, saints. Amen. It's because okay. this is the church, and the church was a mystery. But now he's telling them how they should do, mm -hmm. how they should walk, how they should talk. Mm -hmm. Just like dear children. You instruct children what to do and how to do things. We need to be teachable. Amen. Just as children are teachable. Amen. All right. Now. Verses number three. Verse number three. Okay. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetous, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Oh God. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Did Paul tell him how to act? Yes, yes. In other words, some things shouldn't be named among the saints of God. And that, number one, is sexual immorality. Okay, talk about that. More impurity, mm -hmm. indecent, offensive behavior. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Pastor. Our greed must not even be hinted at among you. Yeah, it should never be said among the saints of God. That's right. Well, but Paul is saying that you're, you should model the word of God. Yes. Not just say it, but model it. And I like this part, but he said, let there be no filthiness. Mm -hmm. And silly talk. Look at my silly talk. Okay, obscene or vulgar joking yeah. is what it's talking about. What yeah. Talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But instead, speak of your thankfulness to God. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't be just full of folly. Yes. Talking folly stuff. Okay. But just talk about how you thankful that God put you in the family. Yes. Before the foundation, He chose you. Yes. Talk about those things, things to be thankful. Yes. We just had Thanksgiving. So we ought to be reflecting on the things that God has done for us and be thankful for them. Oh, yes. How Christ gave his life for us sinners. Now, verse number five. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an adulterer hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ 
and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. All okay, right. Pastor? Amplified Version, starting at verse 5, says, And be sure of this, no immoral, uh -huh. impure, or greedy person, for that is in effect an idolater, okay. has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God, for such person... Tell Pastor, before you get started, tell what idolater is. Well, idol worship. That's all it is. That's and, all it is. And in this context, it's something mm. like, don't put anything before God. Amen. Whatever Amen. is put before God is oh, equivalent yes. to our idolatry. That's right. That's right. Worship. Don't put nothing before God, saints. Yes. All right. Verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments that encourage you to sin. Woo! For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, those who habitually sin. So sin yeah. is fun. Uh -huh. Sin is popular. But when we are saints of God, we want to imitate the Son of God rather than the celebrity of these days. In number six, Pastor said, with, let no one deceive you with empty arguments. No, whether you're arguing about things just encourage you to sin. Like they may say, there's nothing wrong with you doing a little white lie. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. It sounds sweet. It sounds like it's okay. But no, that, you should not lie. Jesus did not lie, so don't you lie. <laughs> so you got to be careful. Don't let that little simple thing people may say to encourage you to sin. Don't do it. So do not participate or even associate with people like that, really. Okay. All right. Now let's go into our next topic, verses 8 through 14. Walk in light. Walk as children of light. At one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. The fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. That's Ephesians 5 and 8. So actually, he's just really getting ready to repeat himself using different words, but he's just saying the same thing. So we're just going to kind of just read it to you. Go Amen. ahead and watch them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. This is acceptable for you to walk in the light mm -hmm. and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Amen, Pastor. She said, for once you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Live as those who are native, born to the light. That way you were born into the light. For the fruit, the effect of the result of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Trying to learn by experiencing what is pleasing to the Lord. And letting your lifestyle, this is what I'm talking about. You got to let your lifestyle be an example of what is most acceptable to God. Your behavior, expressing gratitude to God for your salvation. Your behavior should be that of Christ, saints. Do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character. For it is a disgraceful even to mention the things that such people practice in secret. Paul is really trying to get the church to practice the lifestyle of Jesus. Treat one another right. Live a right life. And stay away from those that are not doing that. Amen. Now let's go to verse 13 and 14. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. God precepts. For it is light that makes everything visible. 
For this reason, he says, awake sleeper and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine as done upon you and give you light. It's amazing how that Paul is sitting in prison and he is writing to the church telling them how to act and react. To me, that's, 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 very, that's very commendable because sometimes when we go through things in life, we don't want to carry it to nobody else. We're trying to get in carriage ourselves. We want to feel good about our situation. But Paul is showing us another way that the saints should do. And that is, in the midst of your suffering, in the midst of things happening in your life, you still can be a encouragement to somebody else. Amen, Pastor Washington? Now, let's go to our next topic, which is walk in wisdom. And that will be verses 15 to the 21st verse. Walk in wisdom. Okay, Pastor Washington, you want to just read the amplified version? All right, here we go. Therefore, see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people. Oh, God. Verse 16, making the very most of your time on earth, Amen. recognizing Amen. and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom mm -hmm. and diligence because the days are filled with evil. With evil. Isn't that some pastor? Verse 17, therefore be not foolish and faultless, but understand and firmly grasp what is the will of the Lord or what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. Do not get drunk with wine. Now this is a definition of how to be filled with the Spirit of God. All right, Pastor. Talk to us. Or a definition of what a Spirit-filled life looks like. All right. Even you read er earlier, Pastor, that's like the characteristics of walking in the light, of walking like the Lord. Mm hmm And now, a person that's living a Spirit-filled life is going to be controlled by the Spirit, just like a wine though, is controlled by his drinking. You know, you're right, Pastor. That's good. Here we go. Verse 18. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, uh -huh. stupidity. Yeah. But be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns oh, and spiritual yeah. songs, offering praise by singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, Pastor, he said, always giving thanks to God the Father for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, are you giving thanks to God in all things? Now, remember I said now. Well, what does that mean? Paul yeah. was in prison. Okay. But he's yet giving thanks to God. Why would you give thanks to God and you're in prison, Lady Washington? Because you know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Thank you. You got me. You got me. You got me. Yes. Yes, Pastor. Okay, so in other words, you give all thanks because you trust that God sees. Oh, yes, He does. And if He takes you to it, yeah, he'll, take he'll you through. carry you through it. Yes, okay, He would. Yes, He will, Pastor. I like that. And if we don't praise Him, then we're going to magnify our misery. Yeah. And then we're going to talk one thing. And be thinking another, and that is, woe is me. Yeah, and Pastor, if you praise him, that will give you peace. Yes. Peace in the midst of your storm. Yes. Or whatever situation you're in. Yes. Praising him means to magnify him. Oh, yes. And when you magnify him, then your situation, although it's real, it is manageable or even defeatable because greater is he that is in me. And he that is in the, in the world. world. Oh, yeah. Verse 21, being subject one to another out of reverence for Christ. Now, the rest of our message is going to be dealing with that verse 21 mm -hmm. where it says being subject to one another. Yeah. Because this is a mystery. Is how <laughs> we represent the ministry between Jesus Christ and his body, which is the church. And then you see this little diagram I have here, Pastor. It says marriage, Christ and the church. Gonna be from verses twenty two to twenty thirty three. Okay. From verses twenty two to thirty three, and it was saying this is talking about the wedding covenant, and it's talking about how the wedding covenant is wedding when you leave your mother and father and cleave to your husband. Okay. But with the covenant, it means cleaving. Okay. Okay. Sanctified, headed, 
In other words, I'm going to cleave to the Lord. I'm so cleaved and so until I'm going to be an imitator. Okay, okay. So you can look at that later whenever you get time. And now let's go into our verses. Now, again, we're getting ready to talk about husband and wives being submitted and loving one another. But remember, this is all based on verse 21. Uh-huh. The verse 21 says, submitting yourselves yes. one to another yeah. in the A fear reference of, of God. Uh -huh. So I'm not the boss if I'm the husband. Uh -huh. She's not the boss if she's the wife. Yes, Pastor. You're not even the children's boss. We are supposed to submit to one another and thereby representative of how the nature of the relationship of Christ and his church is. You want to read it again, Pastor? Verse 21 is submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Yes. Now, you want to read the King James, ver I mean, King James Version or the Amplified? Well, you want me to read? Or yes, you want to read? yes, you go ahead and read. So which one you want me to read, Pastor? Either. Okay. I, I like to read the Amplified. I just love studying the Amplified Version of the Bible. Okay. So let me just read that. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as service to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as Christ is head of the church. You see how they're putting it in, uh, showing an uh, example of how they work together? In other words, whatever he's asking the wife to do, or asking the husband to do, is a reflection yeah. of how the head and the body should work together. Christ is our head, yeah. and we are his body. That's right, Pastor. And whatever the head tells the arm, the leg, the foot to do, the arm, the leg, and the foot obeys. I'm talking about in a natural body. Yes, Pastor. So, spiritually speaking, whatever his word tells us to do, mm -hmm. that's what our goal is to do. Pastor, that's so good. You did that so good. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to get the right word, and you said reflection. And that is so true because it's reflection of the husband in a family being the head of his wife, and as Christ's Savior, is the head of the church. Yes, so when you even... Both are heads, you know. Yes, I have to say amen to that. Uh-huh, go ahead, Pastor, I'm sorry. Well, uh, marriage is a very spiritual thing. Amen. You, you are marrying for various reasons, but one of the reasons is to represent Christ oh, yes. in this earth. Yes, sir. And if you're going to represent Christ in this earth, then your attitude towards your husband is going to be submission. Amen. If you're trying to represent Christ. Yes. And yes. if the husband is trying to represent Christ, his attitude toward his wife should be unconditional love. Oh, yes. Verse 24. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives should be subject to their husband in everything, respecting both their position as protector and their responsibility to God as head of the house. Husbands, love your wives. Seek the highest good for her and surrender her with a caring, unselfish love. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Boy, isn't it amazing how Paul uh, put this together, how the, the family and the church, he put it so clearly how that is a natural way then it's a spiritual way. Yes. And he put the natural way as like husband love your wife. Caring and unselfish love. Surround her. Surround your wife with a caring, unselfish love as Christ also gave himself up for the church. Yes. Isn't so, that something? So uh, my treatment of my wife should not be dependent upon how she treats me. That's right. I'm supposed to surround her with an unselfish love. Yes. Uh, had Christ treated us the way we treated him, then we wouldn't be saved. Amen. Now, this is very, very, very negative unless you are looking at it through a supernatural calling. Yes, sir. You see, it's a negative thing for a woman to be subject to her husband in everything. That's very negative mm -hmm. unless you look at it. In today's society. This is in today's society. In today's society, yeah, any because, society. But, but, but in the previous society, before we got here, in Jesus' time, Bill, the woman, they accepted their role as being separate to the man. And it was a very negative thing because he can have as many wives as he can afford, All right. things of that nature. All right. But in this day and time, uh, we it, it's positive if you're doing it as unto the Lord. Yes. Because Paul said in the 7th chapter of 1 Corinthians, even if he's not saved, 
if you're saved, you might win him by uh, that type of behavior. And in the third chapter of First Peter, he said, uh, try to win him with a quiet, Ooh, meek, yeah, yeah, and humble yeah, spirit, yeah, yeah. not with a lot of words or anything. Ooh, yeah. So it's negative if you leave off the reason for doing it. And the reason is we want to glorify God in our bodies. In our marriage, yes. And God will reward you for faithful and diligent submission. And the husband, if I were to say who had the hardest chore, I would say it would be the husband because love is unselfish. Now, I can talk it. Yeah, Pastor. Unselfish, but, yeah. <laughs> but I have that button. Yeah. And if you hit that button. Once you push that button, that's it. Bye. I'm going to go off. <laughs> and then what I need to do yeah. before I go and try to preach somewhere. That's right. Is to come home, uh -huh. apologize. Repent, yeah. And if it's really repentance, Repent. it's Return. going to be a change in yeah, behavior. that's right, Pastor. <laughs> so my highest goal is love. Yeah. And if it's demonstrated through my actions. Oh, yes. Now, that's deep, Pastor. Now, verse 26 so that he might sanctify the church, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word of God. 27th verse, so that in turn he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Verse 28, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Isn't that something? For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And that's the way the church is with us. We once was in the darkness. We once lived our own life. But now we want in Christ. Yes. We are one with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are one. Thank God. We were joined to the body. Verse 32. This is a great mystery. This is what Paul is saying. Okay. Of two becoming one is great. But I am speaking with reference to the relationship of Christ and the church. However, each man among you without exception, is to love his wife as his own self, mm -hmm. with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her, with an attitude of loving kindness. When I read this, you know how he's talking about how the man should love his wife as yes. his own self? Mm -hmm. I thought about Christ. I said he loved us so much mm -hmm. that he gave his life. Oh, yes. And not only that, he wants the best for us once we come into this great life. Look at the cost Ooh, of love. Yes, Jesus. It, if you really love someone, it's going to cost you. Amen. The Bible says, you know, St. John 3 and 16, For God so Ooh, loved the world yes. that it cost him. Ooh, what did it cost him? He gave. What did he give? His God only begotten God. son. So when you say, or when the scripture says, Husband loves your wife, love your wife, mm -hmm. he's saying to the man, It's going to cost you. To love her. This is why you take vows for better or for worse, sickness and health, uh, until death do you part. Because real, true love costs you. Oh, so, yeah. so many times we're looking at where it says the wife be submissive to her husband in all things, and that sounds negative because uh -huh. man has a sinful nature. Oh, yeah. Man has a greedy nature, an yeah. obsessive nature. You may have been watching pornography as a child. You don't know what you're getting into. Amen. So it sounds negative, but when you do it as unto the Lord, the Spirit of God can make it right. Oh, yes. And let me read verse 33 again. However, each man among you, without exception, is to love his wife as his very own self, with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness, and the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him dear. The mystery of marriage. Marriage was given by God to display the gospel to the world. Say it again. 
Marriage was given by God to display the gospel to the world. And marriage is a training ground for experiencing the gospel at its deeper levels. All right. Through our marriage, others see Christ. Physical relationship, spiritual connection, pray together. That's a connection. So, marriage unveils mystery of church. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, mm -hmm. but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Remember I said it earlier? Yes. It's yes. an illustration. The mystery which for ages have been hidden, Ephesians, building up the body of Christ. Now, Pastor, I close a remark. Okay. Now, Christians should imitate the Heavenly Father and walk in love at the example of Christ. That can be found in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, first and second verse. This is a conclusion of all those verses you heard us read. Okay. And this is to put it in perspective. Okay. Okay. Everything now, we've talked about, we're mm -hmm. going to, this is, this is everything we've talked about in a nutshell. Amen. All right, go ahead, Lady Washington. And this is what you should get out of it. Christians should imitate the Heavenly Father and walk in love after example of Christ. Okay. Verses 1 and 2 of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. They should avoid all uncleanness, impurity, covetousness, and foolish jesting, idolatry, because these things exclude from the kingdom of God. That's in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, 3 through the seventh verse. Okay. The Ephesians were once in darkness. But being now light in the Lord, they are exhorted to walk in that light and bring forth the fruits of the Spirit and to have no fellowship with the workers of iniquity whose evil deeds are manifested by the light. That's in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, 8 through the 13 verses. All are exhorted to await, to walk circumspectively, to redeem the time and to learn what the will of the Lord is. And that's verses 14 through 17. The apostle gives particular directions relative to avoiding excess of wine. Verses 5 and 18. Okay. To singing and giving thanks. Verses 19 through the 20th. Submission to each other is in verse 21. To husband that they should love their wives. As Christ loved the church. For by the marriage union, the union between Christ and the church is pointed out. And wives are exhorted to reference their husband. And that's verses 22 through 33. Okay. Amen. This is the closing remark. So if you want to go back and read the, the verses of those of that chapter again, you could just look here at the closing remark. And he give you just a topic of what those verses I to you or show you. Mm -hmm. Time, Pastor Washington would do a word of prayer. Just pray. Lord, we thank you that you've sent your word. We thank you that we have heard the word of God. Yes, now, Lord, help us to live this supernatural life that you're calling for in these last and evil days. As you said in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 21, to submit ourselves to one another. Help us to humble ourselves under your mighty hand that you may exalt us in due time. Thank you, Lord, for your word now. Thank you for your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is the ending of our Bible study for next Wednesday and here, chapter 6 of Ephesians. You want to say goodbye, Pastor? May God bless you now. We enjoy ministering to you.